Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This was my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. It's harvest time with the Harvest Crochet Pumpkins. Today's tutorial is the size that's indicated in the video title. There are three sizes in this one pattern. We have small, medium and large. Now I should tell you right off the bat is that you're going to need a five millimeter size H crochet hook and you can see that they have different colors of harvest different pumpkins. I'm going to be using the same color for each one of my pumpkins and what you're going to find is that rounds one through five are the same on all pumpkins and then it changes because the pumpkins obviously change size and then we're going to come back in. Now the stems are the same on each of these so what we're going to do is get you started and today's tutorial is the one as I mentioned indicated in today's video title. So without further ado I'm going to just take you through a quick uh, overview of the instructions and then we're going to start one through five. So everything in the pattern that you need is available here so when there's an information difference you'll notice that there is uh, instruction. So for example you're going to do the instructions and it says small pumpkin only on round six is here but for medium and large you'll see that it's around six is different and every time there's a change what you'll have is that you'll have information that was indicated. So when you look at this particular pattern you say wow the, you know there's a lot of instructions for a small pumpkin. That's because you have to jump to the ones that uh, make a difference. So for example small pumpkin only and the next time you'll do the small pumpkin is over here all sizes as we get smaller because the medium and large are the only ones affected in this whole section. So it's really not truly a lot of writing when you're looking at each pumpkin individually from size to size. So let's uh, tell you something else that I think is going to matter for you and then from this point we're going to then get right into it. For tutorial reasons I just drew myself a quick little diagram to get myself started. This is rounds one through five. Do you notice that these single crochets are always in the same spot and you're going to notice that they're going to appear in the same spot as you're working through. There's a total of five different bumps that go out so I've already got some of these already done so and I'm going to pick it up and, and finish it. So you see that there's one, two, three, four, five. So these single crochets really give you an indication and that's what's pulling it in to make the other part of the section just like you see how it bulges out. Those single crochets are the ones that are in the, the, the in between the bulges of the pumpkin. So once you understand that it actually works out pretty easily and uh, that's it for now. So without further ado let's start now rounds one through five. So this here is our goal one through five to make five bulges that appear out. So it's the single crochets that are here that cause it to just jump right back in and then we bulge out uh, in immediately too uh, once you have these double crochets and etc. So let's grab our crochet hook. A five millimeter size H crochet hook. I'm going to be using Karen Simply Soft today and this uh, color is called uh, pumpkin of all things and uh, we're also going to be using taupe then for the stems for today's tutorial. So let's get ourselves started. We're going to create a slip knot to begin and we need to chain a total of two. So put this on and one, two. Now in the first chain, okay, the second chain from the hook, I want you to put in ten single crochets into that same one. So let's count those out together. So we're gonna go one, two, it's gonna be tight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And now we have to slip stitch it to join it to the other side but if you're not sure just count it back. So just each uh, uh, stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and just pull it back if you have to and this is the tenth one and then that's the first one that you're going to insert your hook to and pull through and through and that gets us started and now we're ready for round number two. So let's begin round number two. You're going to chain up one and in the same one that you have the join I want you to put in two single crochets. So there's a repeat pattern going all the way around for this. So the first one has two single crochets in it and then the next one has two double crochets in it. That's going to start the bulge. So you're going to put two into the next one. So one and two and then you continue to repeat this going around. So the next one has two single crochets in it. So one and two and then the next one after that has two double crochets in it. Please repeat this all the way around for round number two. 
So coming up all the way around I have what you can see is four modules. So one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna finish the last stitch which is gonna be two double crochets in it because I'm keeping it in count with the pattern and then that's when the fifth bulge is gonna appear and then I'm going to join it to the first single crochet that you started with. Just like that and that completes off round number two. So let's now move on to round number three. So let's begin round number three. So it's kind of an unusual round but just follow it, it will work out. So you're gonna chain up one to begin and you're going to single crochet in the same one that has the join. Now the next one has two stitches in it but they're completely different stitches. So the first one in there is gonna be a single crochet and in the same stitch I want you to place a double crochet. I told you in the very beginning that there was two single crochets that are in between the bulges and so there was the first one and then there's the second one that was included into what I just put in there. So the next one is gonna be one double crochet by itself and then the next one is two double crochets into the same one. One and two. Okay, so there is kind of like one bulge. So the next two in a row are going to be single crochets. So one and two. And let's make the next bulge. So in the same one that you did the, the second single crochet into, I want you to double crochet into that same one. Okay, and now the next one is one double crochet into the same, into the next one and then two double crochets into the one after that. One and two. Single crochet into the one after that and now we're gonna begin another bulge. So single crochet the next one and then double crochet into the same one. You're gonna double crochet into the next one by itself and then two double crochets into the next one. So I want you to repeat this idea going all the way around and I will see you at the end of this round. When you get all the way around the last stitch before you finish it has two double crochets in it and I'm not doing anything special I'm just keeping in line with the pattern and therefore you're going to attach it to the first single crochet that you started with. And that will conclude off this round. So this is round number three. So now let's move on to round number four. Round number four we're gonna chain up one and in the first two of them, so the first one that we're gonna do is a single crochet and we're gonna do single crochet into the next one. So let's continue to make our bulge bigger. So we're going to put two double crochets into the next one. So one and two. And now th the next two in a row will each be one double crochet so one and two and then the final one will be two double crochets into the same one. So one and two. Okay, once that's done the next two are single crochets. So one and two and I'll show you this repeat again. So the next one in a row is gonna be uh, two double crochets. So one and two. And the next two in a row will each be a double crochet. And the next one after that is gonna be two double crochets into the same one. So I want you to repeat that idea going all the way around. So the next two are single crochets, then there's two double crochets in the next one, there's two double crochets by themselves or one double crochet in the next two and then the final one is two double crochets and then you just keep repeating that all the way around. So please do that, this is round number four. So I'm finishing up the fifth bulge, this is round number two and I am just keeping it in line with the pattern and the last stitch will be two double crochets in it. So one and two and I'm going to join it then to the beginning single crochet that I started with and that will complete off round number four. So round number five is the final round of all sizes that we have and then each one of the sizes then goes to its own size uh, difference from that point. So let's start the fifth round 
So we're gonna chain up one and the first two in a row like before are gonna be a single crochet each. The next one is one double crochet by itself and the one after that is two double crochets into the same one. So one and two. The next three in a row are one double crochet each. So one, two, and three. And the final one in the bulge is two double crochets into the same one. So one and two. And then we start all over again. So the first two are gonna be one single crochet each. The first one out is going to be one double crochet by itself. The next one is two double crochets into the same one. The next three in a row are one double crochet. So one, two, and three. And then the final one in the bulge is two double crochets into the same one. And then you keep repeating that same all over. So two singles, then one double by itself, two doubles into the next, three in a row of doubles, and the final one in the bulge is two into the same one and keep repeating that. I'll see you at the end of this round, round number five. So I'm coming to the end of round number five. There's gonna be two double crochets in the final one and that's just keeping in count. Not doing anything special and then I join it to the first single crochet. So all rounds from this point now, six on, take a different uh, path depending on the size of the video and uh, we're going to now move on to round number six that matches the size of this video. So let's do that next. So moving on to round number six for the medium and large pumpkins. Medium and large are exactly identical up until round number nine. After round number nine, you are going to repeat round number nine five more times if it's a medium and seven more times if it's the large. Then both of them are going to use this instruction to decrease. So there's one, two, three rounds to decrease and then all sizes picks back up which we already have filmed as well. So then that will take you right to the end and then you'll put on the stem. So at this point for both medium and large we are going to then move on and uh, continue now round through six through nine. Round number six for medium and large. I'm gonna chain up one and the first two in a row will each be a single crochet. So the same one that you did the attaching to and the next one which is still a single crochet. So you're gonna maintain that throughout. So what we're going to do then in round number six is that the first two are gonna be one double crochet by itself. So we're gonna go one and then the next one is two and then the next one after that is gonna have two double crochets into the same one. So this is where you're gonna increase. Now you can either count or you can look. It's up to you. It'll work out either way and these two are the single crochets. The stitch right before the single crochets will have two double crochets in it. That's always gonna happen as we do the increase through rounds up until uh, round number eight. So what we're gonna do is just do one single crochet or one double crochet each in the next four. So one, two, three, and four and look at that. It takes you right to the last double crochet right before the single crochets. So if you can identify your stitches, you don't have to count, you just have to look and put two double crochets in that last one. So that was one of the bulges done. So to start the next one, the first two are gonna be two single crochets or one single crochet in the first two and then we do the, we start the next bulge. So the first two in a row are going to be one double crochet and then the next one is two into the same one. Now you can either count and do the next four double crochets by themselves and then do the fifth one as two or you can just look and just do the last one as two double crochets into the same one. So if you can identify your stitches it makes it a lot quicker and uh, once you understand it it's awesome. So this is the last double crochet before it uh, goes to the next singles. So you're gonna put two there and then restart again with putting one single crochet in the next two and build out once again. Please do that all the way around for round number six. So I'm coming up to the end of round number six and I'm just maintaining the pattern as I know it. The last one will have two double crochets in it and that's because I'm only keeping in balance with the pattern. So there's nothing special there. Just keep on moving along. 
So just slip stitch to the first single crochet that you started with. Now round number seven we're gonna increase once again. So round seven, eight are increases. So you're gonna chain up one and the first two again are one single crochet each. So this time the next three in a row will each be uh, one double crochet each. So one, two, and three. Now the next one, see how it's part of the V section? It's the second one. It's gonna be two double crochets into that one. And then what you wanna do is then the last double crochet that you have here, it's the second one of the V um, shape that you have of the two. That's gonna be two as well. So you can either count it over if you want to. There's five in a row. So one, two, three, four and five and that takes you to the second one of the double crochets. There's gonna be two into that one. So if you can identify certain things, that's awesome. Now you're gonna uh, build for the next ball. So the next two are single crochets. So let's just do it one more time. You're gonna do three double crochets in a row. So one, two, and three. And then the next one, see how it's part of that V? It's the second one and it's gonna be two into that same one. And now the next five in a row or if you wanna look for the last one of the, of the group, then that's the one that has the two in it. You're noticing that I'm not counting because I can identify my stitches. If you can too, you'll save yourself some time. And the last one of this group has two. So please do that all the way around for round number seven and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I'm finishing up round number seven. There's two double crochets in the last one and I'm only keeping count and then you just join to the first single crochet. Round number eight is the final of expansion round for uh, both the medium and large. It's the last expansion. So you're just gonna start off and you're gonna just chain one and one single crochet in each. So this time in round number eight, the next four in a row will each be a double crochet. So one, and I'll show you something in a second, two, three, and four. Look how you got the two in, a, in the same one. It's the second one like it was before has two into it. So one and two. Then the very last one of this whole section, the last one here has two double crochets in it as well. And that is a total of six double crochets away. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you're on the last one that has two into the same one. Okay, and then moving on. So the two in a row are single crochets and then we begin all over again. So just single cro or double crochet again. There's four in a row. So this is two, three, and four. And if you look at it, you should see the V shape. You do. It's the second one. That one has two. And then just carry on and you'll do the next six in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that takes you to the last one and there's two into that one. Please do that all the way around for round number eight and then this concludes the expansion and then nine is uh, going to be the stabilizing and then either medium or large then takes a slightly different path but then we'll start decreasing together. Both medium and large are the same repeats for decreasing. So please do this all the way around for round number eight. So I'm coming around to number eight and I'm just going to slip stitch to the first single crochet. So round number nine you're going to just do this once and then you're going to repeat round number nine. For the medium size it'll be five times and for the large size it'll be, or for the large it'll be seven times. So you're just gonna chain up one and you're going to single crochet in the first two. 
Okay. Now each one of these all the way to the next uh, single crochets are all gonna be one double crochet each. So it's kinda hard, right? <laughs> Not really. So you're just going to be able to just double crochet yourself all the way until you get to the next single crochets. And then where you get the single crochets, just single crochet right over top of them. There's a total of two. And then you're going to just go all the way back around and then repeat it for the set number of times depending on the size pumpkin that you're working on. Chances are it's either the medium or small at this particular point because the um, a small one doesn't ever get this big. So it's one double crochet in each of the double crochets and one single crochet in each of the single crochets all the way around. So I'm finishing up round number nine and this is it for now and just slip stitch it to the top of the first single crochet. I use stitch markers for myself to help myself especially in this particular pattern. It's easier to see if you use a stitch marker when you go all the way around. So for the medium size you are now going to continue now to uh, five more repeats of what you just did in round number nine and for the large you are going to repeat this seven more times. For tutorial reasons so I'm this stitch count is exactly what you need to have after you get your repeats done. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna progress now into the decrease and then what we're going to do is well, once we do the three rounds of decreasing we're then gonna pick up the smaller pumpkin here and carry it up right to the edge. So what we need to do is get smaller and then it will get to the size of the small pumpkin and then we decrease it more and then we then then finish off to the top. So let's uh, begin to do the decreases next. So at this part of the tutorial you should have your additional rounds. There will either be five if it was a medium, seven if it was the large. I'm not gonna do all that extra work here because I don't need to because this stitch count equals the amount of stitches that you'll need to do the decrease. So take that uh, information and then substitute it then for you. So we're now gonna start the decrease for both medium and large and this is round number one. We're gonna chain up one and the first two single or single crochets. We're gonna maintain that. And now the next four in a row to have this done is that they're each gonna be a double crochet. So one, two, three, and four. And then the next two are gonna become two together. So just wrap and into the stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold and do the next one the same way. So wrap in, pull through two and hold. You have three loops on the hook, pull through all three, two just became one. Now for this one here, you're going to have a total of, um, of a decreasing that we have and there will be a total of six in a row. So just let's do those, count those. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And what I want to show you, the last two of this group are is the one two that become together. You will see those last two even in you do all that extra rounds like you should have done. You'll see those two and those will be the two that come together for two together double crochet. You immediately start the next section. So two single crochets in a row and then four double crochets in a row. So one, two, three, and four. The next two become together. Two single, uh, two double crochet together. And now the next six in a row are each one double crochet. But I'm not gonna count it. I'm just gonna look for when this section ends. So the final two, these two are the ones that come together. And if you can uh, see that, you'll save yourself so much time from being able to have to visually see everything as you go in each and every time around. So I just missed it, so these two. So I gotta just back out and just get that last two and put them together. So continue that same idea for round number one. For the decrease, there's only three rounds and then we're gonna go to all sizes then to continue to decrease more. So two singles to start the next uh, section and carry on. So I'm coming up all the way around. The last two are two together for double crochet and then you just slip stitch to the first single crochet. So we're now gonna move on to round number two of decreasing and uh, you're gonna notice that it's gonna start bulging in even uh, when it's even larger size than it should be. So I'm a, of course I told you I didn't do the additional rounds because the stitch count works out. So let's continue then into round number two. 
we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet in each of the first two. And now this time is that there's gonna be three double crochets in a row. So one, two, and three. And then the next two are together. So two together for double crochet. And now the next five in a row are each double crochet but you can look for it and see the last one of the section and put the last two together. Either way you'll end up with the right number. So you don't hear me counting at this moment because I really don't need to. So this is the last one because you see it's two together from the row below from around below and so those two become together. And then begin a new section. So the first two in a row are single crochet. The first three to start a new section is gonna be double crochet each. And then the next two are two together. And then the next five in a row are each a double crochet or you can just look for the last two and just put those two together as well. So please do that all the way around for round number two for medium and large pumpkins for the decreasing at this moment. So I'm coming up to the end of round number two for the decreasing for the medium and large size and then you just attach to the first single crochet. So this is the final decrease then it goes to all sizes then beyond this point and so we're going to decrease now round number three. You're gonna chain up one and you're going to do uh, two single crochets in a row. You have already been doing that all along. And now this time around is that the there's gonna be two double crochets in a row. So it's only two this time and then the next two become two together. So you're gonna get faster and faster as you're eliminating stitches out. And then this time around there's only four stitches in a row before you get to the other side of this bulge. Again the last two become together but there's four double crochets that are between that between where you are and be before you do that. So this is gonna be the fourth one going in and then the last two come two together. So this is gonna take you to the final circumference that matches the small size and then we're gonna carry on from the small size after that. So the next two in a row are each a single crochet and we're gonna restart again. So the first two are two double crochets or one into each of the two the next one is gonna be two together. So the next two come together. The next four in a row each become a double crochet. And then that leaves you the final two of that bulging area and those become two together. So please repeat that idea all the way around. This is the third and final round for the uh, medium to large size pumpkins and then we progress continuing on in the small size all sizes in order to get to the very end of the top of your pumpkin. So please do that now. I'll see you at the end of this round. So I've just gotten all the way back around the last two or two double crochet together. So at this part of the tutorial we have to then go to all sizes in the pattern. That will take you to the small size. So let me just take you there now. We've, I've already filmed that. That was my first tutorial. So where you are is approximately right up here on the small size. You see how you got into the same diameter. So all sizes then will then bring in the shape to here. The only difference is, is that you'll have a much bigger, once you uh, fill this out you'll have a much bigger pumpkin. So the difference between the large and the small size at this point is that the amount of extra rounds you did in uh, round number nine it was either five or seven more times. So it just makes it taller pretty much and then you can make it expand a little bit more. So either way you're good to go. So the rest of this tutorial is gonna take you from the small one right to the very point. You're going to do your, um, your stuffing and then you're going to do your stem and then that's it. So let's carry on from that point and have a good one. We'll see you soon. So now we're gonna start decreasing. Now from this particular size the small starts here and then from the medium and large you would have finished some instructions before you get here. So all of these particular sizes then finish off with the last four rounds and then the stem is the same for each. So let's begin now they're all sizes round number one and then let's begin decreasing from this point. So on screen it's a small size pumpkin but it's the same instructions for all sizes in this particular part in the tutorial. So let's uh, begin and we're going to chain one and the first two in a row starting with the first one will be a single crochet. So one, 
and two. So the next one is one single or one double crochet by itself and then the next two are gonna become two together for a double crochet. So wrap the hook, come into the first one, pull through, pull through two and hold it. Don't pull through anymore. Go into the next one after it, going in, pull through, pull through two and hold and now you have three loops. Pull through all three. So that was two together double crochet. The next three in a row will each be one double crochet by itself. So one, two and three and then the final section in the bulge. So the last two double crochets that you have are two together. So wrap going in, pull through two and hold. Wrap next one, pull through, pull through two and hold. You have your three loops again, pull through. So that was the two together again. So let's begin another bulging section. So the first two in a row are single crochets. So one and two and now let's start a new section. So we're gonna do one double crochet by itself. The next two are two together. So one and two put those together. The next three in a row are going to be one double crochet each. And finally the final two double crochets in this section are gonna be coming together. And then you're gonna start all over again. So the first two are single crochets and etc. So just rewind this tutorial if you're not, I'm not sure how it goes at this particular point. So this is how you do the first round of all sizes. When you get back around you are just gonna come in and the last two are two together and then you're just going to join to the first single crochet to finish. So let's move along to the next round. We're not gonna stuff yet. We're gonna do one more round first. Let's begin round number two all sizes. So we're going to chain up one and the first two are gonna be a single crochet each and we're gonna decrease again in this round. We're gonna keep decreasing until we get close to the end and uh, the next two in a row are going to be single or two together uh, double crochet. So wrap the hook, pull through and then uh, pull through two and hold it and then do the next one, pull through pull through two and hold. Three loops on the hook, pull through all three. The next two in a row are one double crochet each. So one and two and then finally in this bulging section the last two are two together. So one and pull through and then pull through all three. So two single crochets in a row and that and then we begin again. So let's just review one more time. So the first two are two together, double crochet so put them together. And then the next two in a row are, sing are double crochets by themselves. And finally in this part of the bulge the last two are together. And then finalize it off with the single crochets two in a row. So please do that all the way around for round number two all sizes. At the end of round number two you're just going to then uh, just those two, do uh, two double crochets together you're going to join it to the first single crochet. So now it says to get our stuffing ready let's start uh, preliminary stuffing this. We don't wanna bulge it to the point so let's just pull a large loop and just get our polyfill and just as part it inside. If you overstuff anything like this it bleeds stuffing and you just want it to hold its shape firmly but not crazy like it's bulging. I've seen, I've done it myself where I've done amigurumi where I've stuffed something where I literally ruined my project by putting way too much stuffing into it. So what's gonna happen near to the end of this is that on all the sizes that we have so you're gonna restuff, are you gonna stuff on all sizes at this particular point is that when we get to the end we're just gonna sew the top middle down to the actual um, bottom so then it kinda creates the bulge to happen on its own. It's easier to pull stuffing out of a project than to put it back in if it's too much. Okay so let's just give it some shape kind of don't be scared to pull on it. And let's begin then round number three. So we got two more rounds to go in order to get back to the start. So let's begin round number three all sizes. I usually put a stitch marker. I have been on this one uh, all the way through because it's just easier for me. So I'm just going to chain up one and in the same one that you did the attachment you're gonna only do one single crochet this time. There's not two in a row. And so the next uh, single crochet and the next two together are gonna become one. So that's the two together using this first single crochet and the next one. 
and pull those together. The next one is one double crochet by itself and then finally in this bulging section the next two in a row are two together for a double crochet to finish. So the next one is one single crochet by itself. It's really gonna pull in now at this point. So let's begin to review. The next two, so there's only one single crochet between the sections now. So the next two are going to become two together double crochet. So you're using the first single crochet that you had before. Put those together. One double crochet by itself. And then the next two are two together. And that finishes off another bulging section and then finalize it with a single crochet. So please do that all the way around for round number three. You can see it's really pulling in now. So I'm coming back around there's gonna be a two together and then that's it. So you join it to the first single crochet that you had started with. Just like that. So we're gonna move to the final round number four and then that's really gonna close in the top of the center here. So let's begin to do that next. So we're really gonna close off the top now. We're gonna just chain up one and then every two are gonna be come together. So just going in, it's a single crochet two together. So go into the first one, pull through and hold the loop and then advance to the next one, pull through and pull through then all three loops and you keep doing that. So advance to the next one, pull through and go to the next one after that, pull through and then you got three loops pull through all three. So keep doing that all the way around until you get all the way back to the start and I'll see you at the end of this round. Once you come all the way back to the start just attach it to the first one and you're gonna be left with a small hole in the top. So what I want you to do is that grab an extra long strand from the yarn ball just like you see. Just trim it and we're gonna grab a darning needle and what we're going to do is just pull this through the final loop and you're going to use that strand then to sew the top shut but you're also gonna reach down and grab it through the bottom section to create that bulging shape of a pumpkin and you're gonna do this for all of the sizes as well. So let's uh, just put it onto a darning needle or a tapestry needle I should say. And just feed it through the top of the remaining loops. So just pulling in. So what I would do is just kinda pull it through but don't yank on it but just pull it through all of the, the loops that you have and then once they're in all of them you just pull it like a closed line. And go back into the one that you started with. So once you've gone all the way around like I have just kinda stabilize it and just pull. See? Now you're gonna put a stem here. So what you wanna do is that you wanna go down through the project and turn it over and come out through the bottom here and then just go back in. So just grab it onto a little bit of strand work so that it will hold it and then come back out through the top. And when you do that, see it'll pull it down on its own. And you may wanna go back and forth a couple times to do that to get that bulge to happen. So you'll do this with all the sizes that you have available to you. So the more you pull it the more of the indentation that you'll have. Again you can decide what's right for you. Once you're satisfied with it you can just on the top section here just tie in this yarn strand you're going to be putting a stem right over top of this section anyway. You want to do a good job but if you go back and forth three times you can hide it even better. Just like that. So what we're gonna do then, all sizes will finish off exactly this way and then what we're gonna do is apply a stem and uh, we have the stems already done and then I'm gonna show you how to do that and then attach it to there to finish off your 
little pumpkin. So this is a small size version so far. If you see any bleeding of stuffing through just kind of poke it back through with the needle or just or with the hook and or just uh, if it's not going back in just kind of pull it whatever's kind of leaking out on you. So let's move along to the stem for all sizes. For the stem in all sizes they're each identical to each other for the width uh, the, the height. So this is the height that you see and the way that we're using the back loops it creates the texture. I want you to leave an extra long strand for both sides and when you finish make sure one is on one side because what you're gonna do is you're gonna close off using the remaining strand on the one side and use an extra long one here to sew it directly to the pumpkin. Without further ado all sizes are the same so let's begin to do the stem next. Using the same size crochet hook a five millimeter size H I want you to leave an extra long yarn strand that you'll use to sew to the project. You either uh, use it to close out the project at the end. So I want you to chain ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. It looks big now but it will compress a bit. Second chain from the hook the back hump of the chain I want you to single crochet all the way back. And you're gonna work your way all the way down the stem. Now you can go as long as you want to. If you want a longer stem then you'll chain more and if you want shorter stem then just chain less. If you want a thicker stem then we have to go to an inch and a half for width of this uh, when we get this done and if you want it thicker just go even more and if you want it more narrow then just don't do as much. So basically you have some free choice here. You're gonna turn your work. So here's what you're gonna do for the remaining of this one here chain one and in the back uh, uh, loop only so the when you're looking at the strands two strands are, are equivalent to a stitch. The furthest strand is the back loop and you're just gonna stay in the back loop only and single crochet all the way across. So because you chained nine and you went second chain from the hook all the way back there's only a total of nine stitches. So you may wanna occasionally count just to make sure that you're not missing any and not accidentally growing it out at all. So it's gonna be one single crochet in each of the, of the back loops. And then when you get to the end of the row I want you to turn. Okay, so that's the last one. So turn your work, chain up one and dive immediately into the back loop only. And I want you to single crochet. So you wanna go back and forth to this height equals a total of an inch and a half, uh, inch and a quarter I believe. What is it? An inch and a, um, a buying time, inch and a half. So but an inch and a half and then what you're going to do is then fasten off. What I recommend to you have this strand finish off on the opposite side. So like I showed you before see how the strand is on one side. Have the other one finish off the other because you can use one strand to uh, finish off the top and use an extra long strand then to be able to sew it to the pumpkin. So use the final strand that you're gonna uh, finish off with. Make sure it's extra long and you can then sew it to the pumpkin. So go an inch and a half for me and then meet me back here in just a moment. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna take the extra long strand that we have and you are going to then put the sides together. Okay so just going directly across the way and just pull on it and close it like that. So what you wanna do just move down and just match the stitches across from each other and you're just going back and forth so that you're attaching these together. A pumpkin stem is never perfect. So you know you will you can get it to look perfect because uh, it is art and creativity right at this moment. But if it's not perfect that's even better to my point of view because each pumpkin is unique when you're going to pick it from the ground. So I'm just working my way back down. Now if you would like to close off at the top that's up to you if you would like to do that. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just now that I'm down and I've got an extra long strand I'm going to just slide my hook through the stitch work back to where I was and I'm gonna use that to then attach it to the pumpkin. The other side here what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to attach it to the needle and I'm just going to just attach and close off the top section here. So if that bothers you you can do that right now and you can get a nice section. So if once you got that done if you go back and forth a total of three times it will never fall out. So one, two 
and three. And then just fasten that off or just uh, cut that out. So put the needle back onto the other strand and grab the top of your pumpkin. Any size will do, like any size pumpkin. And you're just going to attach into the middle section of your pumpkin. So I'm just gonna back out the camera for a moment here in a second. So let's back out this camera and let's pull this in to the top. And then diving in to the stem to attach and then back down into the pumpkin and just attach it. And you're going to attach all of your stems in the same way for all of your sizes that you have. Now because you did the ribbing effect on the single crochet stem, you can actually give it a bit of a twist too because usually pumpkin stems have that twist. And then once you're satisfied with it, you can just fasten off. So I've gone now technically all the way around. And now I'm just gonna simply just go back and forth three times through di three different areas. So one, two, and three. And I'm done. So therefore you have your little pumpkin. So if you would like to give it a bit of a twist, it looks even more amazing. And this is how you do the pumpkins. And this is a small one. And uh, you can do all the other sizes exactly this way. And I will see you at the end and have a great day. I don't know what the end of anything, but have a great day anyway. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>